Most of you have probably seen SSH used either at work or to clone GitHub repos, but maybe you aren't quite sure how it works or you're curious to know why we think it's cool. This one's for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy SSH and terminal related content. We will be coming up with more of that in the future. So what is SSH? SSH is the go-to for authorizing access to remote servers and services. You authenticate with an SSH private key that has an authorized public key on the server. And now first off, let's preface this by saying that SSH is not the same as OpenSSH. OpenSSH, AKA the SSH binary, is a suite of secure networking utilities based on the SSH protocol. It provides a secure channel over an unsecured network with a client server architecture. So when you are doing an SSH into a remote server, that is using open SSH and it is different from the SSH protocol. It is built on the SSH protocol. What's interesting is that open SSH actually started as a fork of SSH, but has since become proprietary software according to Wikipedia, okay? OpenSSH specializes in tools for remote systems administration, while SSH is a flexible protocol with an open architecture that makes it suitable for various use cases. You probably see SSH commonly used for administrating a server remotely with OpenSSH, authorizing remote processes like SCP, for example, which allows you to send files via an SSH tunnel so that the data is encrypted in transit, providing secure access for users, securely mounting a directory on a remote server as a file system. You can use it for port forwarding and it might be less commonly used for browsing the web through an encrypted proxy connection with SSH clients. You get extra nerd points for that one. And there are plenty more. I highly recommend checking out some of the resources that we've linked in the description to learn more about that. Now, before we jump into the charm stuff, we gotta talk a little bit about the SSH layers. There are different layers to SSH that you might not be aware of. There is a transport layer, the user authentication layer, and the connection layer. The transport layer uses the TCP port to handle initial key exchange, as well as server authentication and to set up encryption, compression, and integrity verification. It exposes to the upper layer an interface for sending and receiving plain text packets. The user authentication layer is responsible for client authentication. Because authentication for SSH is client driven, you may get asked for your key password by the client while the server responds to authentication requests. The most common authentication method I've seen is the public key authentication, and there are other methods of authentication as well that are supported by SSH. The connection layer handles different channels in your SSH connections. So you might have multiple channels per connection as they work to transfer data bi-directionally. Some examples of channels include a shell for terminal shells, um, SFTP and exec requests, direct TCP IP for client to server forwarded connections, and forwarded TCP IP for server to client forwarded connections. Now let's talk about how we use SSH at Charm. First off, we don't touch OpenSSH on our servers. So you're not being given uh, shell access to any servers, period. We serve a TCP connection using the SSH protocol and you, the app developer, can do whatever you want with it. It's pretty much like reading from SCD in and writing to SCD out. With Wish, you can define what kind of authentication you might want for your SSH applications, and you can define what users are authorized to interact with the application using SSH for identity management. We're also using SSH for identity management with Charm Cloud. How this works is that the first time that you run Charm, it creates an SSH key pair for you. From then on, it uses those keys to verify your identity, to access the hosted file system, encrypt and decrypt functions, and your key value stores. If you're ever worried about losing your SSH keys, fear no more, okay? We've got Melt, which allows you to back up and recover your SSH key pairs with seed phrases. So you can keep a hard copy in a safe place, in a diary. If you're interested in learning more about our suite of SSH tools, you'll wanna to check out Wish, Wishlist, Melt, 
and Charm Cloud. We've also got some stuff in the future coming out with SSH, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're interested. There will be future content about SSH and what we're doing with SSH. You can also check out our soft serve TUI. So soft serve is our self hostable Git server that is accessible over SSH. And you can try that out for yourself by running SSH git.charm.sh from your terminal to get an interactive demo on what that looks like. Thank you so much for watching. All of our socials are linked in the description if you'd like to follow. Connect with us on Discord or in the comments. We love, love, love hearing from you guys and what you're interested in. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Bye.